to this edition of Top of Mind. Um, this week I want to take stock and just talk a little bit about artificial intelligence. It's certainly creating a lot of hype in the market and a lot of opportunity for companies. The, the overall expectation in terms of the impact globally is varies enormously. But one of the things that we're starting to think more closely about is actually the impact on a personal level. Not from a social perspective, but actually the interaction level and what's going to make successful companies and how they need to be thinking about use of AI. In particular, as AI starts to interact with people, it needs to have a human edge to it. It needs to have that touch and feel and the quality of content, not just from a technical level, but actually feel like you're interacting. Today I'm bombarded through chatbots who want to engage with me, but more often than not I find them pushy and rude. It's not personal. That can actually destroy a company just as quickly as help it grow. So putting that personal touch through AI, not just from an ethical standpoint, because we do need to be careful of the ethical boundaries of operating through AI, but actually using AI as a sales engine, as an interaction engine with customers, we do need to be aware of that softer side of things. That's my top of mind for this week. Thank you. Top of mind for me recently has been the further changes in the tectonic plates of the TV industry. Of course, we've known for some time about the shifts in viewing habits, migration online, but when Disney, as the world's biggest media company, chooses to, chooses to launch its own streaming service and pull its content from Netflix, it's worth paying attention. So let me just briefly consider what does this mean for some of the stakeholders around here? What does it mean for Netflix, for the incumbent TV businesses here in Singapore and in Asia, and for Disney themselves? Well, Netflix appeared to be the losers here. They only signed up Disney content a year ago, so they really haven't had it for very long, and we're getting great traction that viewership through the Netflix platform of Disney content and indeed children's programming more widely has been tremendous. That said, the people at Netflix, they're very smart and they've anticipated, at least if not Disney's recent move, they've anticip anticipated that it would be hard to secure the most premium third-party content. And that's why they've invested multi-billion dollar budgets in their own content and producing Netflix originals. So I think we'll see much more of that and it shows that it's never good enough for a platform to succeed only by having a great user experience on the distribution. Content remains king. Now, for the pay TV businesses and the incumbents here, I don't think this spells disaster any more than all the recent trends. I think it's highly unlikely that Disney will pull their content from the cable operators as well. That would be biting the hand that feeds them really for Disney who make a lot of money through their, their carriage fees. But pay TV companies still need to address the broader long-term issue of the generation which will be eyeballs going online and there will still be a role for somebody to play in performing a sort of super aggregator of all these multiple over-the-top TV platforms to make it easier for the consumer perhaps they can play a function there and finally what does this mean for Disney themselves I think you've got to answer that holistically looking at the Disney business their strategy is not just to make money through TV and indeed not through media Rather, they produce these fantastic characters and they use the media business to publicise them and get them into our psyche and then monetize that in a complex series of value chains through theme parks and merchandise and books and CDs and everything else. So really, Disney will just be using this streaming service to maximise eyeballs to their, to their content and I wouldn't like to bet against them.